Yes, I'll be the lighter. Blaze up your fire, miss it, raise your lighter. Brighter, come again. Find the strength within your heart. And with love, you'll find your part. I know the road seems hard for so. I dream your dreams and don't let go. Cause some of them want to fight you down. Some of them want to see you frown. Some of them rather see you on the ground. Some of them, some of them. Some of them hate, but they don't know All we need is love to grow For the dream, for your life, for your soul Let your power unfold And turn, turn with yesterday And I'm sure I will find my way Life, it keeps moving on So I got to seize this moment I'm a fighter, for my book, yes, I'll be the writer. Blaze up your fire, miss and raise your lighter. Brighter, come again. Find the strength within your heart. And with love, you'll find your part. I know the road seems hard for so. But dream your dreams and don't let go. Some of them want to see you fail. Some of them fail, the winds of change. Some of them hide behind a smiling face. Some of them, some of them. Some of them feed up on your tears What they've been doing that for years Tell me when we pretend Don't pretend that everything is alright I refuse to be the one to take the fall And if I take this stand today I'd make a better way So someone else could say I'm a fighter 
nyo malayan at nasa mafighta Fighting the strength within your heart Dream life your soul Let your power control Everybody looking nice inside the place today. How are you guys doing? Good, good, good. I wish I had the setup that Gareth has. <laughs> you know, drum set pan. He have a whole band inside the basement there, man. What's you, up, guys? You have some so, professionals moving in and out every day, huh? Anyway. <laughs> welcome, 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 welcome. Wendy, can you hear and see now? Hey. All right, good. I can hear you now. All right. Can you hear me? Right. Yes. Yep. yep. Welcome, everyone. Hello. Hello. Nice, nice. So this is our first edition of a virtual webinar brought to you by Pan Arts Network. And we would like to thank the Toronto Arts Council for, you know, helping us out with this endeavor. Right, Wendy? I don't think Wendy's hearing me, you know. Or does she have yes. that delay again? Uh, it is a pleasure that we were okay. able to. I can hear you. Okay, you have a yes, slight I have delay. A delay. All right, cool. <laughs> so I'm going to take like a second. Yes. So you go ahead. And then I will speak. So as Earl said, um, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, on the fact that the Toronto Arts Council has been on our side as a presenter, uh, tonight, we are happy to have every single one of you here with us. And it's amazing that it is no accident in 2021 that we are in a virtual pandemic right now. We are asking all top educators, as you could see, who are on board with us tonight, Earl, um, to be a part of the voice of education. <laughs> Wendy's having so much difficulties tonight, it's not even funny. But as you were saying, we have so much of you guys, the top facilitators in Toronto. Um, and you know what? Just today I was speaking to a good friend of mine by the name of Earl Brooks Jr., who I know does the same thing in America. And I was like, oh, I should have had you on the panel tonight. And I know he said he's going to try to come in and watch a little bit later. But for now, can we start introducing ourselves? Let's go from the top. 
Mr. Gareth Burgess, please introduce yourself. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. So, yep. Gareth Burgess here. I'm a teacher at the TIT. Burgess here. I also teach at York University. And, um, yeah, um, all of my um, programs yeah. are surrounded around the steel pan. Uh, there's a, few, a little bit of band in TSD, but it's still kind of minimal. A lot of my stuff is up there. Right now, with the pandemic, I'm teaching steel pan and using the apps that are given to us in our Chrome Labs and the music labs provided by the TSB to try to still deliver some sort of and try to still deliver so that's my background. Um, I also play with a few bands, um, and I'm also the arranger of Maddox currently, the steel band. And I play with um, Calabash, and I also play with uh, CKC, which is a band run by Eddie Bullen. So two quartets, or quintets there. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you, wicked. So Wendy, please mute your mic as well. Um, everybody else, when somebody's talking, just mute your mic so we don't hear the echo. We'll go right along the top, Mr. Torian Clark. Hey, guys. Uh, good evening, everyone. So um, my name is Torian Clark, and I'm a music instructor at the Toronto District School Board, um, which I've been working for about uh, close to 15 years, um, teaching steel pen and band uh, in both uh, secondary and elementary schools. So I've also, um, sorry, I've got my notes, sorry. <laughs> um, so I've been playing steel pan for probably close to 30 years. Um, so I, I also graduated, well, my, fir like my first band I ever played with was with Panatics. And actually, ironic ironically, um, with Garrett, we actually were the first young Panatics from, from uh, back in the 90s. So um, my dad was the arranger for it. Um, but I also, um, I graduated from Humber Jazz Program about, a, ooh, very close to about 20 years ago. Yeah. And I'm also graduated from the York University Bachelor's Ed uh, Program as well. So I, um, so I'm a, so I've also an arranger. So I've arranged for, uh, for Jesse Ketchum, uh, Pan Vibrations. I've also played for Panatics, Silhouettes, um, Fantasy is a couple of times. Um, I also uh, played at various jazz festivals, including the Toronto, Markham, Brampton, Beaches, and the Scarborough Jazz Festival. Whoa, plenty. And you know, I was a part of that band as well, you know, when you guys was young Panatics. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, in the Flemington Park area. Yes, man. I was a part of that. I used to play percussion, me and Messi. <laughs> mm. All right. All right. Cool. Thank you very much. Mute your mic there, Torian. Oh, yeah. Mr. Andre Rouse is in the house. How are you this evening, sir? Uh, I think your mic is mute. Hold on. You have to. Sorry. Good morning, morning, everyone. Um, I actually remember the young fanatics as well. Um, so. <clears throat> Myself and a couple of people on the panel go back, go back like car seats. So for some of you, this might be uh, skipping down memory lane. But I am. Uh, my name is Andre Rouse, and I've been involved with the Afro Caribbean community since single digits. Um, I ventured into playing steel pan um, around the age of nine or ten. Uh, since then, my experience has been a progressive one. Um, my education is from York University, um, and I've been a steel pan, uh, sorry, a music teacher since 2013 with the Toronto Catholic District School Board. Um, currently, I am uh, running my band, Souls of Steel. Um, I've been involved with many bands over the years, um, possibly all of them, except for uh, a couple in. Uh, I think there's one in Oshawa, one in Hamilton, but mostly in the GTA. I've done a lot of work over the years with many different people and many different bands. So my experience is, has been um, a great one and I'm looking forward uh, to more of them. Nice, thank you so much, Mr. Rouse. Thank you, thank you. Ah, Mr. Joe Cullen, long time no see. <laughs> long time no see. This morning. Yes. 
Yes, you could tell them the story if you like. Go ahead. Sure. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, Earl was a uh, was a guest artist uh, via Zoom with my Grade Nine Steel Band today, talking to them all about. Um, there's Jimmy um, talking to my class about the Toronto Pan scene and everything to do with Pan. Um, I graduated from Humber in the '80s as a percussionist, and then worked on a cruise ship, and that's where my interest in Pan started, because there were steel pan combos on every island I was. I was on. And uh, when I went to U of T, I asked the head of percussion there to get some pan workshops going and made sure that I practiced taught at schools with pan programs. <clears throat> so um, that's when I really got into pan. And I ended up, uh, the timing worked out well when I left U of T. Pat McNeely was leaving to go back to Trinidad and left an opening at West Humber Collegiate and North Albion Collegiate the very same month. So the timing worked out beautifully, and I, I started the PAN program at Humberwood Downs. And right from the first day, the whole PAN community was so welcoming, and I learned so much from uh, from Lane Clark and Lindsay Burgess. Uh, Andre came to West Humber and did a, did a practice teaching there, wrote some arrangements for my students. Earl's been to West Humber a million times as a guest artist for our arts nights. Uh, Randolph Karamath was uh, working with Panache. Uh, East at Cedarbury Collegiate, and uh, Al Foster was running Panache at my school, like the whole Toronto community. And then Autumn Leaves and Snowflakes on Steel, bringing in all the guest artists. Um, the West Humber Steel Pan program is, is huge now, and we've had a lot of guests come to West Humber, and we've been to a lot of cool places, making CDs and everything else. And then uh, U of T approached me in 2006 to start a pan program there. And the dean there was a pan player. Um, and there was a lot of support to start the pan program there. And it's been running since 2006. And um, I play in a combo and do gigs and things like that. Nothing like what you guys are doing, but I enjoy playing pan as often as I can. But teaching for me, I guess, is, is what I love to do. Great to see you all. It's an honor to be here. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yes, it was fun this morning. Um, we did it two days in a row. Um, the kids at West Humber has some amazing questions for me. Um, <laughs> I forget the one that he asked me that this kind of threw me for a loop, but I'll remember it before the end of the show. Like that question, you know, you always have questions that you, how did you start? Or, da, da. This kid came up with a question. I've never heard a question like that in my life. And I was like, yo, that's the best question I've ever heard in my, in my life. So I'll try to remember before the end of the show. Shelly, <laughs> how are you? I'm good. Thanks. It's so nice, nice to, to be you. here. Thank you all for having me. It's, it's an honor to, to sit here, represent the women in the community as well, in the steel band community. <laughs> Um, so yeah, my name is Shelley Karamath. Um, I am a teacher with the Toronto District School Board, elementary teacher. So my involvement with steel band in schools is um, a little bit different. I'm running a band um, at the extracurricular level. So I do things with the kids at lunch. <laughs> so my time with them is a little bit more limited. Um, but I started playing steel band when I was nine. My mom was the one that dragged me into it. <laughs> Um, she really pushed me and encouraged me to learn, my brother and I. And that was at West Humber under the direction of Pat McNeely, my first instructor, um, through the Naparima alumni. That was where I started learning. And that's where I met Al. <laughs> Al has known me since I was since I was nine playing steel mm -hmm. band. And we played together with a band at the time called Pantastics, not to be confused with Panatics. So um that was again under Mr. McNeely's instruction. Um, played with them for a little while. Then um, in 2005, I played with Silhouettes for one summer, which was a really fantastic experience for me. Um, and then uh, my dad and I, we have our own uh, professional six piece band that we do for you know events and, and weddings and stuff like that called the Steel Bandits. Um, and that's been around for a over 20 years now. I saw Michelle. There's Michelle. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a great experience too. Um, and I also played Pan for Maestri and Friends, a Parang group here. A couple Christmases I spent with them, which was amazing. They're an amazing group of people and musicians too. 
And I did also have a few uh, private instruction with uh, Chris Copeland, who's another fantastic soloist as well. So uh, that was another wonderful experience. Um, my first time going to Pan Fest was as a student in grade 11 when I was going to Cedar Bray, and that was with my dad's steel band at Cedar Bray. I was 16. And so it's kind of cool to come full, full circle now, taking my own band to, to Pan Fest and uh, carrying on the culture and, and music like that. So that's me in a nutshell. And I'm still teaching at all different schools. I've moved to different schools as a classroom teacher and I've done steel band uh, programs at all the schools that I've been at. So it's been pretty cool. Amazing, yeah, especially for that full circle at Pan Fest. Yeah. And I think I remember that, that's true. Hadfest is one of the festivals that I look forward to so much. And man, it's going to be hard when summertime comes around or spring comes around and we don't have it again. So <laughs> nice, nice, nice. All right. So we're going to turn to Mr. Al Alos Foster. Please unmute your mic, sir. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. First of all, off to the Pan Arts Network for having me. Um, it's uh, definitely a privilege to be a part of this uh, this panel, this talented panel of uh, musicians and uh, otherwise professionals. Um, my experience, um, I'm an itinerant music instructor with the Toronto District School Board. I've been working with them for t uh, since 2011. Um, before that, um, I attended school and um, it's, it's funny that Shelly mentioned uh, full circle because I have a, full, a, a few circles of my own. Um, I actually attended uh, Elmbeck Middle School um, where there was a program, a steel pan program there um, directed by Mr. Panman Pat, Pan, Pat McNeely. Um, I, uh, when I attended, first of all, before that, um, to show you how crazy these circles get, um, I grew up in Jane and Finch. So I, uh, I went to Shoreham Public School, was my very first, uh, my first school. And attending Shoreham Public School, um, there was a school right beside Shoreham Public School called Jane Junior High. It's now known as uh, Brookview. And the teacher at the time was Mr. Lane Clark, who is uh, Tori and Clark's father. And uh, he was the, uh, the teacher there um, up until grade five. Um, we always had a treat from the school. You know, the school used to, the students from the school used to always come to my school and perform. And um, I was always excited and intrigued by this instrument. And being, um, being a Canadian born with parents not from Trinidad, my parents are actually Jamaican, um, steel pan was not a part of my culture. So it was something new. It was something cool that I wanted to do. Um, in grade six, at the end of grade six, I was excited about moving on to Jane Junior High School to play steel pan. And all of a sudden, my mom says, no, nope, we're moving. So we moved to Etobicoke, and that's where I attended Elmbank Middle School. And um, Elmbank Middle School, the uh, Pan Man Pat was, was um, doing the steel band there. Um, funny story, grade seven, got into a little bit of trouble, and teacher said, nope, you're not joining steel pan. So missed out on the chance there. Um, opportunity came back around in, uh, in 20, sorry, in 1992, 1992-ish. Um, when the steel pan program was uh, started at West Humber Collegiate, um, the school that uh, I attended for high school. And uh, Joe Cullen is the, uh, the headmaster there. And um, I, uh, I attended there and finally got my chance to uh, play steel pan um, there. From there, I graduated from high school, went to uh, Humber College, studied uh, a few other courses, went to York University, did a little bit of studying there. Um, after um, backing up to where I was in West Humber, I joined a group called Pan Fantasy, uh, Pan Fantasy Steel Band, um, as a musician there, and um, was under the uh, directorship of uh, Lincoln Waldron, and he was uh, one of my biggest mentors musically, and um, still does uh, continue to be to this day. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. The rest is history. Um, the circle, where the circle comes in, is um, so I am now a teacher 
at my former school. And it's not uncommon for me to actually teach at many of the former at, of the schools that I attended as a child. So it's it's actually um, it's it's very humbling to see where you were, and it's still it's still surreal to go to work and pass your locker that you were at in grade seven and say, you know, that was my first classroom and, you know, that was my this. And, you know, I tell the kids all the time and it's, it's, it's a very cool story for me to share. And I take a lot of pride in what I do and um, I'm here for the ride. Um, my experience with Pan Fantasy Steel Band, <clears throat> excuse me, Pan Fantasy Steel Band, um, one of Toronto's popular, um, uh, popular steel bands, um, definitely um, a big experience for me. I am the arranger for the band, have been since 2000, and uh, continue to grow there. And thank you to Wendy Jones and to the rest of the band for supporting me in my endeavors. Thank you, Al. And hopefully Wendy Jones' mic is going to work, and she's going to stop popping <laughs> in and out like she's doing costume changes at Snowflakes. Like, what's <laughs> going on? <laughs> Wendy. Can you hear me, you yes. hear me now? Yes, All finally. Right. Sorry about that, guys. I think the mics in my house are just uh, the Wi Fi is weak a little bit. But it is a pleasure, as I was saying before. This is amazing that we have such talented educators in our midst. I feel humbled tonight that if we were to add up the years of experience, we would reach 100 in a good way, Earl. Uh, this is well, truly past that. Uh, I, I, think, I think we just about passed it. You know, yes. when I look around and I how, as Al has said, and Shelly, that they've all intertwined in such a way where we've come full circle, where they started as, as students being taught by other um, mentors in our community, like Pan Man Pat, and now to be taking the torch and running with it, and Joe Cullen doing the same thing, and Al being in that school. And then we have Andre and Torian, uh, and then we had Lane Clark, who was teaching back then. Um, and then, you know, Al ended up teaching me now, you know, it's amazing. And, and we have a joke going, but Al, um, I, I want to say thank you because we all have an integral part to play in the teaching of Steel Pen in Toronto. And that takes me basically to where we're at right now, Earl, and to our panel where we are looking at Pan in a Pandemic. And uh, how does that look for some of you? Because we're now teaching in a virtual world. Um, you know, we have to adapt to different things. So I don't know if you can share some of that with me. I'm not gonna ask anyone, but you know, just jump in and, and give us your thoughts of what's happening in your school and how are you adapting to the virtual learning right now? So let's go to the top again. We'll, we'll try to keep it in order, I guess. I'm going to I'm yeah. just jump in. If, okay, well, jump, jump, yeah. jump. Go okay. ahead. Uh, well, uh, can't. while we were faced with, Gareth, do you want to go ahead or? Okay. Torian was saying something, but you could, it wasn't me. Oh, I'm sorry, Torian. You can go ahead, brother. Well, I think for, I guess, for the itinerant, so I guess myself, Garrett, and um, Al, I think it depends on the school you're at and depends on, because I think it depends on the administration too, because for some schools, they decide to not have PAN at all. Mm -hmm. And for other schools, they, they, they made the effort to doing it. So for me, like I teach about seven or eight schools, but for me, I have both pan and steel pan, and I only have one school that I'm actually doing. Steel, I'm actually having the kids play the instruments at least before we had the uh, the second part of the lockdown where we're we were all home. But um, I don't know if it's any different for the rest of you guys. But um, in regards, to, it's kind of funny because um, with the steel pan, we were actually a little more luckier because we were still able to play. Even even with the um, the new um, safety measures, but for like for other programs that like, we're because there's steel pan, there's band, there's strings, and then there's orf. The other sections could not with during school time. They had to rely on basically having if they allow kids to play at all, because there's also a component where you have you couldn't share instruments with in different cohorts, okay? So basically, 
one instrument per one student. And we know with a lot, we know with a, a lot of schools, there's no schools that have that. All right, there's no schools where they have one instrument that's being used by one student. You have one instrument that may be using by be used by different students in different classes. But this year, you couldn't do that. So a lot of schools decide to not you either not use instruments and decide to go more of a generalized music uh, music experience. Uh, I'm sure a lot of my coworkers probably would probably would be in the same boat as me. So, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure about a lot of the uh, like 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 Shelly or like um, Joe. I don't know what your situation, but a lot of us we had to really change our curriculum right at the last minute. So, Andre and um, Al, you want to share with us what your thoughts yeah. are there? For, for me, I had some anxiety. I had to think of a way to move from an in-person experience to a digitized one. So I didn't have any positive or negative anxiety. It was just, I, I was anxious, but I, I was also excited. And, you know, I was thinking back to teacher's college and I remember saying to myself, what are you going to teach me in teacher's college? What, what am I going to you know, get from these professors and how it, how how am I going to apply that when I'm actually in the classroom? And that's one of the, that's one of, that was one of the most interesting things for me, you know, how to teach a teacher. But you, you don't get the experience with many things in life, including teaching, until you're actually on the front lines. And so, um, something that Torian said actually stood out to me. I've been blessed out of the out of the three schools that I'm teaching at right now. Two of them is conventional instruments, and one of them is steel pen. But I've never had an I've I've been blessed that the program that I took up at these schools, they all have enough instruments for the classes that I teach. So nobody is sharing. Now, what does that do for me? That helps with um, homework assignments, that helps with practicing. You know, you can't really um, blame somebody for not bringing the instrument for you not knowing your part. Um, but now that we've moved to online teaching, I guess the challenge for me, and it was a welcome challenge uh, because it, I got to, I got to reassess my skills in delivering an interactive and a fun and 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 a program from a distance, and so I started to just tap into what are are my students interested in. What type, what genre of music are they interested in, and take it from there. And so my uh, my my online classes have a lot to do with culture. They have a lot to do with learning other people's culture and the genre of music that's come out of out of that. And um, I've I've actually had a blessed ex a blessed experience. Um, it was difficult thinking about how to deliver an arts program without instruments. I mean, even if you think mm -hmm. about dance, even if you think about drama, or if you think about, uh, you know, even in the schools we weren't the vocal students, the, the, the younger ones, the grade ones to six, they weren't even allowed to sing. So my heart no. went to vocal teachers of how are they going to deliver an in-person uh, program and you're not allowed to sing. Right. They weren't. It, 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 it was yeah. it, these were issues that came down the line. But stemming back to what I said about um, teachers college, when you're when you're there, you're and you're faced with um, a challenge, you you know, that's when you that's when you really see um, how good you are as a teacher. You know, how can you change the way that you're going to deliver your program. So I guess my my main challenge, uh, which I'm still going through right now, but I'm learning, you know, I'm a pro at Zoom now. I'm a pro at Google Classroom. <laughs> I'm a pro at online yes. and signing things and, and, and checking out integrity uh, uh, when it comes to them handing stuff in. I'm a pro at that um, at now. So it, I've had a really, really good experience. But at the beginning, I was anxious, but it's so far, it's okay. really good. 
And that, that's amazing because I think there is a lot of anxieties around the programming of how you guys are moving forward, especially when Steel Pan is a hands-on program. Um, Joe and Al, I, I, if you can chime in there and, and Shelly at some point. Um, can you hear me? I, yep. Mm -hmm. Did you want to go mm -hmm. first? Go ahead. Joe? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll make it brief here. Um, at West yes, Humber, thanks. Given choice. <laughs> I'll make it very brief. Our principal gave us the choice. We have three pan teachers there now. And um, two of them were thinking, maybe this isn't going to work. And I said, I'm let's take it let's embrace this and uh, we'll make it happen somehow because we we want to keep the the flow of the kids coming into the program for for millions of reasons um with the online classes right now i have a grade 9 steel band and a grade 11 12 senior class and we've been doing tons of pan history but we're making it as real as possible using the pan odyssey dvd which is fantastic and it took us about 3 weeks to watch it because we would only watch a few minutes of it and then we would take what that excerpt was in the video, and then we would explore Ellie Minette and Winston Spree Simon and the evolution of Pan. <clears throat> and then we would get to the panorama part, and then we would explore panorama totally in detail. And then we would get to Andy Norell and talk about Andy Norell, Liam Teague, Jit Samaru, Boogsy Sharp. And we did all the Pan greats, and then they would do assignments and submit them all through Zoom. It's working out pretty well. For U of T, we're doing pretty much a similar thing, but on a higher level. Um, and it really bites that we can't actually play the pan. That's a real sad thing because the kids were looking forward to playing the pan. And my students at U of T, the same thing. That is obviously something we can't get around right now, but I'm making the most of uh, the pan history and also bringing in pen players like Earl today to speak to my class. Yesterday, uh, Liam Teague spoke to my seniors live from Chicago. That was amazing as well. Both in both cases, the pen community is is a wonderful group of people who um, love to share what they do. So we're making the best of it. Nice. Um, I also saw one of your students there. That's Elvis, right? I remember that name today, Joe. Is that one of your students? Yes. You see, I remember. <laughs> oh, cool. Go ahead, Wendy. Did we jump in on Al there for a moment? Yes. And, and I guess Shelly. So we're going to try to, we have a lot of questions that I know um, we want to get to everybody. So I'm, I'm not saying be concise, but try to put everything in a nice package there for us, because we really want to hear all about your program at the schools. And I know there's a lot of challenges. So let's, let's go, Al. All right. Well, um, so we're uh, the virtual school and the virtual learning. Um, this is new to everybody. And um, when everything started, the word anxiety pops up often and um, everybody had anxiety, good and bad. And um, being that it's a performance-based program, the first thing we think of is, okay, we don't have any instruments. Now, we were set up. So the nature of my job as an itinerant music instructor is that I travel to different schools. Um, this year, because of the regulations that the health department has put on us, um, the Toronto District School Board has mandated that itinerant music instructors stay at one school and teach the uh, students at the school in person, um, where Steel Pan is concerned, and with the other schools we learn virtually. So we're not completely new to the virtual aspect of it. We did get a few, um, a few weeks practice, um, um, so to speak, but um, once we came back in the new year to the um, to the school environment, it became a little bit of a challenge for me personally, because I'm a hands-on person. I thrive on being there in person. And that was one thing that exposed and, and kind of highlighted something that I needed to improve on as, as a professional. Um, and it, it kind of worked out where I had to find things for the students to focus on. So similar to Joe's experience, I've tapped into a lot of history and I'm thankful for the timing of it, if, if that can be uh, it, as, as strange as it sounds. I'm not upset at the timing of it because right now, um, if we weren't dealing with this pandemic, there would have been a whole bunch of um, events related to Carnival in Trinidad, the Mecca of Steel Pan. So I kind of tried, I kind of used that as my basis and my experience to relate and say to the kids, you know, 
You teach them a lot about the panorama. Um, you expose them to the pan around the neck. You expose them to the different, um, the different categories in pan, period, you know, and why we have the small bands, the medium bands, the large bands from a panorama perspective, but also from a music appreciation um, perspective, we also did, I also exposed them to a lot of soloists. So it, it was a lot of eye opening and it was an opportunity for me to showcase the actual community and see who's doing what. And I did go on some YouTube pages and showcase a few of, of the um, the artists that are out there playing steel pan. And you know, you hear in the background kids are saying, you know, let's follow this guy, let's follow this girl. You know, and especially where, um, because as we know, steel pan history, Steel Pan History didn't talk a lot about women involvement, and I made sure that that was also um, at the forefront because I had to let the kids know that you know we're a little we're more progressive now when and than than back then where it comes to um, having women involved and in, and in different aspects of the of the the Steel Pan movement and um, exposing them to that. This was the perfect opportunity to do that. And when we talk about women, we want to talk to the one on the panel right about now. And I saw uh, just a few moments ago that Suzette popped up. So Suzette, big up to you. Thanks for joining us. And also uh, Shelly. Um, I had the opportunity also of meeting Shelly at a very young age. And I don't think she recalls that because I used to visit her dad's school. And um, Mr. Um, it was it was it was so mysterious. When you walked into the school, everything was laid out properly. I went to his home once and I saw a million records and they were all pan. And I was totally blown away by that. So Shelly, thank you for being here and being a part of this because you're representing us tonight. Oh, I appreciate it. It's, it really is an honor to be here. Um, yeah, I'm learning so much from you, from all of you here, learning about how you've been handling uh, Steel Band under these virtual <laughs> circumstances. Um, for me, it's a little bit different, like I said, because um, my program is um, on an extracurricular basis. And it's the only extracurricular program happening at my school this year. And I had to kind of push for it. Um, and I had to also kind of scale it down even further and keep it to just the grade six students. Because as Torian mentioned about we weren't allowed to mix the cohorts and stuff like that. And I thought it was also really important for the grade six students because so much has been taken away from them being their graduating year before they go into middle school, not having a lot of trips and all these other memorable experiences that happen in grade six. So um, a lot of the kids that are in the grade six steel band this year were in it two years earlier when they're in grade four. So they were also kind of, Miss Karamath, can you, can we? So it was great that I got clearance from my, my principal and from the music department that we were able to run it up until um, the winter break. Um, right now, everything is, is kind of defunct, I guess, until we get back to school. Like we, our students can't do anything virtually. And it's not like they are, they're a class that I have access to on a regular basis. It's just random kids from the different classes that are meeting at lunch. So yeah, right now it's on it's on hold until we can go back into school, um, which is a shame, but I'm really happy that we right. were able to give the students that opportunity. And that's good because I, I think like you're saying, the challenges are there, uh, but with extracurricular activities, we know a lot of it has been shut down, but I remember for myself, um, having to play pan after school, it was amazing. You look forward to that and not having that anymore. I could see kids losing interest and, and getting bored. I mean, pan kept me in school. And I, I honestly say that for a lot of us, if it wasn't for the pan programs in the schools at lunchtime or after school, a lot of us would have drifted away from music programs. Um, I, Earl, what, what was your feelings about that? No, I totally agree. And we discussed this earlier today when I was on Joe's um, forum this mm -hmm. morning, um, like basically his students. And I know I discussed this with Andre. What does PAN really look like for the grade nines or grade tens next mm -hmm. year? You know, like some of them probably never even touched the steel pan. And why would they want to go touch a steel pan next year as well? You know, what I mean, it's like we basically I was begging them and persuading them and saying, hey, listen, trust me, like Joe's not lying. This school, West Humber, I could tell you they've traveled all over, whether it's Chicago, New York. They've done mm -hmm. so many tours that, you know, and you see them having this 
joyful time. I've played, like you said, a million times at Wes Humber's um, music nights, and it's a fantastic experience. It's something that you look forward to. And I've even seen it with my daughter. She just into high school this year. She didn't get to have her grade eight trip, you know, where they go away to Montreal or whatever, and they get away from their parents. She didn't get to do that. <laughs> now she's experiencing going to high school. You know, that was a big thing for us. That's where you meet your friends who, you know, you're mm-hmm. probably still chilling and liming with now. And she doesn't even get to experience having a locker or going from class to class. You know how lost we got as mm-hmm. grade nine students, or we'll be so nervous seeing like the senior students and these things, these experiences, these kids are missing out and losing. Like, what what's going to happen you know what's really going to happen in the next two years for some of these students who are not going to be able to touch an instrument if that's the case you know what i mean like mm-hmm. andre said it best and i hope andre does touch on that again because it's like i i was shocked when he said that and i was like yo you're making so much yeah. sense you know and this this and as you could tell from the comments i'm trying to make sure and put most of them up on the screen everybody's really enjoying this because a lot of people are not even thinking of that you know like wow yeah. really you know, it's I, really I, tough. It's tough. So I just want to jump in there again um, to ask everybody on the panel, what is um, for them their most professional education experience in music um, based on the steel bands and um, something that you're most proud of, like, you know, something that you've done in music with Pan and you love it so much. It gives you goosebumps and you shiver all over I, I in, in some context. Tell us about that. Jump in when you can. Keep it nice and short and sweet, but you know, we're good to go. I've got two, if that's okay. Really short. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we okay. can. <laughs> it's not, it's not um, I don't, I mean, it's, I do arrange music for the kids, but it's on a very basic level because, you know, we want them to get some playing experience as soon as possible. But, um, for me, what's the most fun as a, I love teaching steel band. I think that's been my my favorite experience with the instrument, not so much performing, but teaching. And I get a kick out of hearing the kids play soca on steel band because, and I say this because I'm teaching right now in a school that's in a predominantly white neighborhood and the kids will go home and they'll, like YouTube the songs and they come back the next day and they're singing the lyrics to Soka. And to me, I find that to be the most, I don't know, the most fulfilling. I feel so happy about it because I remember coming to Canada when I was seven years old and being that immigrant kid that was different, that everybody made fun of, that, you know, you spoke differently, you dressed differently. And I was trying to fit in with them and their, their culture. And now it's like, you know, 30 years later, here they are trying to embrace my culture and learning about my culture. So it's always fun for me when I go to PanFest and the kids are playing soca on on Pan. And I had, I had the best, most flattering compliment. Um, an elder gentleman in the steel band community, somebody who I respect, he uh, came up to me and he said afterwards that, you know, those kids, meaning the students in my band, they brought the the spirit of steel band music to Panfest, and to me that was like the most like the most humbling thing. It's just to see Canadian kids who are completely removed from that culture, seeing them immersed in it and and sharing it and enjoying it and loving it because they want to be there. Remember, it's all extracurricular. Nobody's forcing them; they're choosing to be there. So to me, that's like I, I find that to be the most like I get so happy inside seeing that. Um, and the other thing for me was as a player, I think Al was here, he, rem- he might remember this experience too in 2005 when I went to New York, uh, Tommy Critchlow rounded up a group of us and we went to play for the, the World Steel Band Music Festival in Madison Square Garden. Now, it wasn't the best performance of my career because I was so nervous and so like starstruck, but it was important for me because it's the only opportunity to date where I got to hear and experience live steel bands from Trinidad, like the best of the best. And I got to meet people like Pelham Goddard and Liam Teague and Killer Samaru and all these amazing musicians. And it was just something that it, it left a real lasting impression on me. Like this is something amazing when you experience it live. And it really, it really, um, 
it really inspired me. It really got me excited to know that this is my culture. This is this is this is our thing kind of thing. And I felt so much pride in that. So I just want to be able to share that with students. So I think those are my two most memorable things about teaching in steel band. Okay, Earl, let's go down the list. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Um, yeah. Anybody else want to jump I in? I can jump in. It's so funny. Go yeah. ahead. That, um, Who's talking? Gareth. Oh, Gareth, you're talking. So, okay, Gareth. It's crazy that two of the teachers on the panel, right, exposed me to this. And so did my father, and so did another man named Ian Jones. And those two mm -hmm. guys are obviously Al and Andre. And it's the importance of reading yeah. music, right? And, 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 and it's like, and you're taking it from like the perspective now of the kids. So now I'm mm -hmm. trying to teach them and I'm trying to teach them pan, but a lot of them, obviously the first instrument is piano or ukulele or whatever it is. And they're playing from <laughs> home. Yeah. So they're playing from home. So now you have to make it relatable to everybody. And I don't know, but it must have happened to everybody on this panel. Like how many times have you gone to a concert? Like I did a concert at Massey Hall and I played a George Gershwin piece and that teacher comes up to me after and says, well, can I get the steel pan music for that? And in my head, I'm like, no, the music is the same. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not taking the music from anything else. It's the same music that you would do for anything else. So what, I, what I'm doing with this, is, uh, and, and I love it, is that I remember when I was a really little kid, and that's when I met Al and I met Andre. And both of them came at me from a classical point of view, which is where I started. Like I started playing piano in conservatory before I started playing pan. And I don't know if Al remembers, but I used to harass him about a song he did in Calypso. I think it was from, um, he did it with Jesse Ketchum and it was from Swan Lake or, I, I, it was a great arrangement. And it so, was a nutcracker. Nutcracker, yeah. I remember. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to speak because I, I remember playing playing that in that steel band with um <laughs> with Al. Yeah, that was the major arrangement, Al. Right. It was, and so it, it doesn't matter if you're playing it in a different genre. It, and and that's what I'm bringing to these kids now. Like, and they think it's boring because I remember when I started conservatory at four years old. I'm like, man, this is boring. But I now at a obviously at an older age, I'm able to use that towards my pan. And that's how I'm starting with these kids now, because as soon as I started this virtual class, I realized that, oh my gosh, everybody's coming from a different angle. So I can't just talk pan. And they start with the circle of fifths in the, um, we have an app in the, um, called the Music Chrome Lab. pan or the tenor pan so it's so amazing that we have to remember that music is relative and that we're all relating back to and that's what makes me get excited about what I'm doing I'm, I'm, I'm now I actually call my dad today I'm like all the years he's been playing quattro I never learned how to play so I was like can you play ukulele because a, a kid brought, brought a ukulele today so it's 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 really interesting what's going on and, and there's pros and cons to what we're doing uh, so I, I kind of relate to both what Gareth just said and um, what Shelly mentioned. So for I guess my if we're talking about professional, um, I'm sure I'm sure Gareth and sorry Gareth Earl and who else there? I, I guess you two can relate. Remember when we went to China <laughs> as a as a um, a contingency for. Um, I guess it was their cultural program. I can't remember, but we played at a cup at their um, New Year's Eve. Um, it was for their, their first New Year. Yeah, yeah. So it was myself, Andre, you went to second year, and I think Earl, you went to second year as well. Because I think that me I and went Earl, both we went. Years. We went both, both years. years. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Both years. Come on. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was the boss. <laughs> but that was, that was a fun experience for me. I think that was probably one of my highest when it comes to professional. That's probably my highest point. Like, I guess my uh, highest point when it comes to professional. But when it comes to teaching, so I have a sort of, kind of like I mentioned, I have a similar kind of story between, similar to Garris and similar to 
Shelly. So actually, um, I'm I my favorite kind of music is jazz music. So I try to, to incorporate a lot of jazz music into my 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 arrangements would come to my kids. So one year, one of my schools, I played that uh, I played um, a song called Footprints. All right, it's a Wayne Shorter song. All right? And the one thing interesting about that song is it, about that song is I've seen a different um, time signature. So it's in six four. So in a way, I taught the kids in a way how to count six four. So basically, they'll play the first four beats of the song, and then they'll clap the last two beats. So kind of break it down to four beats and two beats. So using that kind of template, they were able to learn the song, and they performed in a pan fest. I remember there was a certain drummer that was right, a certain famous drummer, a, a local famous drummer who played for Fantasy. So his name is Lionel Lewis. And he was there with his soon-to-be wife. And I remember he made a comment that he was really, he was really um, kind of cool that I was able to teach, to relate that concept to the kids. So I guess that's pretty much my highlight of my teaching career. <laughs> So if Joy, you're listening to that, and Larna, you're listening, hello. <laughs> um, I was going to actually mention a couple of things. This question was, there was a, a webinar that I did with uh, Noelle Lapierre um, late last year, actually. And this kind of, this question kind of came up as well. But, and I would have to answer it the same way, but I have an addition. Um, Every so often, I, I really do just sit back, relax, and think about all that Pan has brought uh, to, to my life. And I haven't had to do anything different except play Pan. You know, it, it was, it's one of the best, it, it's one of the, um, music is one of the best uh, outlets. Uh, and I always want to bring that type of experience to everyone I meet. So for me, right now, it's, a, it's an ongoing um, it's an ongoing journey progression with what Penn has brought to me in, in, in terms of my professional life. Um, I'm, I've stepped into writing my own music now, right? I've, I'm affiliated with a producer in Toronto who has taken me on and we're working on my own music. I, I never thought of myself as a, um, I, I guess a, a songwriter if you will. I've, I've had compositions with orchestral, uh, like orchestral compositions and stuff, but just like, you know, short little glimpses of music. I, I've never really done that. And Pan has really encouraged me to do so. The second thing uh, for my professional career is when I go to Trinidad and I play and I'm walking in the in the footsteps of the first generation of Pan people, the Pan tuners, the the the, the behind the scenes people for the band and knowing that we're all living, we are all living the second generation of Pan. It, it's an amazing thing. And being able to bring that to the third generation and pass it on, um, I think would, is the second thing that I think about in terms of what Pan has done for me for my professionalism. Oh, and sorry, and just to add to that, one of the main reasons why I love playing in Trinidad is because I'm just responsible for me and my pen. When I'm in Toronto, uh, I'm I'm normally, you know, doing music. For, I'm either teaching it or I'm arranging or I'm composing. I'm, I'm always kind of thinking about others. But when I'm in Trinidad and I'm playing my four pen, it's like, it's just me, the music and the pen. And it's just, it's bliss. And that feeling, that euphoric feeling is what Pan brings to me on a on an ongoing basis. Nice, nice, and nice. I just want to add to something that Andre said there because that's so very true. It's that we have to remember that music, it doesn't matter what instrument you're playing, is an art. And we are always learning from our students. Like, like it, the things that they do, it's it's because it's an art. Like, it's not something that's that's so, like, like staple, like English, like there's not rules, like rules are broken in music all the time and we might learn them, but it's exactly what Andre said. We are always, in the, and I'm so much more now in this virtual world where I'm hearing what these, in, on an individual level, like I'm hearing them, like how much we are learning 
how much I'm learning from my students. Like it's like I'm picking up instruments that I I have to because I'm trying to relate it. So yeah, it's it's incredible. Does anybody care to jump in and answer this question? Actually, did you guys see the question that Michelle posed? Oh. Um, as, what was that? So she's basically asking, um, as we know, and I, I've talked about it before, and I think I discussed it with you, Andre. Like for Steel Pan, there's a Steel Pan app. I know I use Steel Pan apps all the time, especially when you want to practice quietly. So she is asking, how possible would it be to you do the practical? Um, to teach online using one of the steel pan apps I can agree. are they available who could answer that Al. Um, Al. oh go ahead Al. Sorry. <laughs> okay so um where and that's also part of my teaching um where the um because we 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 have this opportunity this golden opportunity now to showcase to our students what what's there and things that we wouldn't otherwise um we wouldn't otherwise have the opportunity to expose them to. And one of the other things is, um, and this week, this past week, I spent a lot of time educating my students on alternatives to steel pan, meaning the electronic steel pans that are out there, um, the steel pan apps, um, where the technology, I think we're all still new to the technology doing it virtually like this. So there's a lot of, even in this call, there's a lot of latency and stuff happening where there's the delay between you speaking and when the person on the other end hears it. So I use it as a tool and I, I, I put it to the students as a tool for them to practice. It's something to practice. And funny enough, a lot of the kids do their own research and they come back with um, even more apps that I'm not aware of. I'm an, I'm an iOS guy, I'm an Apple guy. So I know what, what's on the iOS but um, there are a lot of people, a lot of my students have come and said, hey, Mr. Foster, I found this. This is, uh, you know, I have an Android and, you know, and this we share with, with everyone. So um, we use that to, um, as, as, as another way to, to keep them engaged. Um, if I can answer the previous question, um, what, for me, um, going back to the question, um, question number three, I believe it was, whichever question you asked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, two things. Um, one of the things that I'm proud of, um, that I'm most proud of, is the the engagement level of the kids. You know, we have kids that are essentially out of our control. They're in their own environments. And really, you know, it, it takes a lot to get students to focus on you, you know, because, you know, I can get up and go to the washroom or I can turn my, 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 my computer off and watch TV. You know, there's so many different choices involved when you're not directly supervising a child in person. So one of the things that I've done and have gotten a, a, a really good response is, again, using the opportunity to play things that are relevant, things that they can relate to. So, um, and, and again, the soloists in the community, like the Earls and the Keyshawn Julians and the other people in the world that do that kind of stuff, they bring that. And so I can easily pull up a video and say, you know, and play it in the background and say, do you recognize this song? And then when they recognize it, you show them and they're totally, you know, that's another way to hook them. Um, the thing professionally that's really um, had the biggest impact on me is you hear about kids, especially in um, where I come from, you know, kids at a young age dream of, you know, a lot of my friends dreamed of, dreamt of uh, being, you know, professional sports athletes, you know, professional hockey players, you hear about the hoop dreams, you know, you look up to, you know, trying to make it to the NBA. And the steel pan was similar to me where I, my only experience, again, seeing that I don't have any direct, for didn't at the time have any family connection to Trinidad, I was never exposed to steel pan um, in Trinidad. And um, so I had to see it. I had to see the videos. I had to see it. I had to live vicariously through the people who, um, who traveled back and forth. Um, now, seeing all the seeing all the greats, all the 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 Len Bugsy Sharps, the Doctor Bugsy Sharp, um, the Jit Samarus, the Robert Greenish, the Lake Professor Fillmore, the Clive Bradleys, all yeah. those people, all those people who we look up to, um, having to now transition and going through and learning and progressing to be at not at the level musically, but 
being a, an arranger for the steel pan, you're doing the same thing they do. So you kind of feel like you're in the same kind of realm as they are. And then, of course, going there, um, my the the band, my band, my steel band, Pan Fantasy, we traveled to Trinidad in 2015 for the international um, the the ICP steel pan uh, competition, uh, the international competition, and to see to actually see local steel bands and to know that you're on the same kind of platform and the same kind of um, stage as they were. That was, to me, that was very, I was in awe the entire time. And I, I, I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it now. That to me was my, I think my biggest moment, um, aside from the everyday, just, just doing what I love. Can I ask a quick question, Al, if Earl and Wendy would allow it? Sure. Um, with regards to the Pan app, um, I've used the Pan app in previous years to, you know, students can't necessarily take their steel pen home to practice. So other mm -hmm. than practicing, have you ever used it for, um, to get kids to like compose their own simple melodies or simple compositions at all? Have you found it useful in that regard? That's the best that access to it, right? Yes. And that's, that's, I think in, in my, um, in, in the traje trajectory of my, where my lessons are going, where my teaching is going, I think that's the next step. So first for me is familiarizing them with the instrument because kids, even with steel pans, when they were in the class, um, you turn your back and they're playing something, you know? So it's no different with a virtual instrument, with an instrument on a tablet, they're just, you know, so now it's once we get them familiar and comfortable with that, then the next step would be to challenge them to say, hey, figure out something, try and, and play something. So yes, um, I haven't done it yet, but that seems to be the way, based on my experience um, this week, that seems to be where the classes are going. Okay, thank you. And I, just, and I, I <laughs> Hi. add one thing to what you guys are saying there, and, and this is sometimes my issue with applications. So apps in all, all instruments, right? And this is something that's really special to me is that you could always learn any instrument by if you're if you're intelligent enough to go and do learn an instrument. But the one thing that I think you you have to remember is the tone that you get out of the instrument, and you could only get that. And so they have to remember that what they're learning is just like how to play the instrument, like familiarizing themselves with the, I guess, with the different patterns of the instrument. But the tone is a whole different aspect right and and that's something that you need to get from actually playing the instrument because it has to sound good so it's, it doesn't matter what instrument you're playing so that i i really like the app idea and i always tell them this when they start on the app yes you know play the app but you could you have to play the instrument it doesn't matter if it's electronic or not to get the tone you know and don't don't have this I don't want them to. Yeah. Well, I guess it's like I'm um, having a pan blend. <laughs> well, um, can I can I check? Yeah, we have Joe. App, app? Joe, sorry, <clears throat> sorry. Just a moment. So, so it, it the tone with the Torian. So just a quick thing here. Um, uh, Garrett is just talking about a tone. For some people out there, they're not too sure what it is you're referring to when you say the tone. When we think of a tone on a pan, a regular pan, a steel pan, we have somebody blending with pans, and there's different things happening. But okay. for the person who needs the 101, it, it's it's a different thing, you know? So what I mean about Can you explain that just a little, little bit quickly and then we'll move on? So the, what yeah. I mean by the tone is in, in, in steel pan, we call that your touch, right? And it's, it's, it's everything has to be musical. So the, some people might be banging. We might call it banging. That's what we, we refer to it in, in steel yeah. pan. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tone is basically the best way to explain it is that a nice sound, right? You want to, and you can't learn that from an application, right? Because you're just right. <laughs> yes, just you can't yes. learn that by press it, and on any instrument, violin, your tone, right. you practice, and it's very crucial to, to, to any mm -hmm. instrument that you're playing your tone. So that's what I mean by the sound that you're getting from your instrument. I think, can I just jump in two seconds here? I agree with Garrett yeah. completely. I think he's referring to like the musicianship, the skill of playing the instrument mm -hmm. is, you can't replicate totally that different. on an electric, on an app, right? So it's like you said, Garrett, you explained it beautifully. 
you do get to learn the, the patterns of the instruments, but the actual skill and the musicianship of, of playing that instrument with like finesse and bringing that tone out of the instrument, you, you can only do that on, a, on an actual instrument. True, but you get to enter another world of creativity. You know what I mean? You're, when, when, yeah. when you're limited, um, you, you, you enter another, uh, kind of another realm of, of shaping music, if you will. So I, I, I totally agree um, with uh, Gareth and Shelley with that point. Um, can I add also one point? Um, there might be an issue with apps because with apps, you got to pay for apps. So, and a lot of kids we have that, that, that especially in the poorer na neighborhoods, can afford to pay for those apps. So if you're gonna have apps, and I, I would love apps, they're gonna have to be at least accessible for, for all the kids to use. Cause it doesn't make sense where you have an app that's like five or $6. Not, the, not every kid's gonna be able to use that app. There so are some free apps make, out there. That doesn't make any point to have an app that not every kid should use. So that's why, that's why the board has a program. Uh, we call it the Google Music Experiment. Yeah, the um, cool. and, and they have, and that's free. So all, all the kids can use it. Well, with with an internet connection, but I think we need to keep that in mind. So if we're gonna go with an app, we gotta make sure everybody else should be able to use it. And that goes with virtual learning in general. Like it's this whole pandemic has really, in all facets of society, all the inequities have surfaced and it comes down even to things like in the classroom, music programs, access to all these different things. So that's a really good point, Tor Torian. So Joey, I haven't heard from you. Um, I'll make it fast here. Uh, it's regarding the app, I was thinking of exploring that as well. And I found out that uh, the best app out there is close to 25 bucks US. And, but it looks like an amazing app. The one that Salmon uh, developed, I guess. And um, the sounds are great. And I was thinking, I wonder if there's a way for my class to all get the app and for us to, they all make a video of themselves playing the arrangements that, that we've given out, for example. But it's definitely cost prohibitive for, um, for quite a few people, 25 US for, for a, and some of them only have a phone, so it would be very small. Anyway, I'm gonna still explore it and see. And then uh, the, the thinking about maybe one of the highlights of my, my pan time is, uh, was when the U of T pan program started because I went to U of T for music as a percussionist and to be uh, conducting pan arrangements on the same stage that I learned or that I performed on with the uh, concert band, the opera and the symphony was pretty amazing. It still is. I still laugh when I go in there because um, it's a pretty hardcore music program there and to, to have Steel Pan playing the arrangements, including some of Pat's arrangements and other arrangements from people we all know, uh, Liam Teagues as well. And to hear it in the halls where it was all classical before is pretty cool. But the biggest buzz of all is when the kids get a standing ovation and you know that a third of your steel band is not doing the greatest in their other classes um, and maybe have behavior issues in other classes. But with the steel band, they are stars and the audience knows it. And the energy that comes off the stage when they're playing, ugh, there's nothing like that. And the parents, when they come out to see the kids and, and just say, wow, he's good at something. He's good at that. That's really cool. Uh, can I add one more thing? I'm sure you guys want to continue, but may I add one more thing, Earl and or Wendy? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, Mr. Cullen, you, you reminded me of something. I remember when um, I had to write a grant to get the instruments, the steel pen instruments, to one of my schools. Um, we wrote a $10,000 grant with myself and the principal and the vice principal at the time. And obviously one of the things that came up was, well, what is my child supposed to do? If they learn steel pen. There's no high schools in the Catholic board that have steel pen. So what are they supposed to do? And th that was a, th that, that's a, a, a sense, um, a sensible question to ask, but I'm telling you the first concert that they came to the parents, you know, we 
As pan teachers, I think, and music teachers in general, but specifically pan, it's it's so it's a lot easier for for children to get that experience of being in a band, performing with an ensemble, performing with your peers and your classmates, that how they perform, their smile, their 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 experience on stage, it just creates this aura. And the audience and the parents feel it as well. And it became very, e it became easier and easier for me to sell the program, if you will, to the, the, the generations that were coming up. Um, Pan just has that effect, you know, from the, the first note that you play to uh, the last song of the night, it's always an experience. And um, you, you made me think of, you ma made me think of those parents who I had to speak to and kind of convince them. And after they were running up to myself, how did you do it? But, you know, they, all they talk about is Pan, they enjoy it. You know, can you do an after school program? And it's, it's, it's so infectious um, that, um, I'll stop it there. Pan is an, infec an infectious thing, and I, I'm 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 blessed to keep it going. So so we know that there's so much we want to talk about tonight. And um, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, we can. And Earl, I'm telling you, this I've always wanted to do this because I'm all into education. As we collaborate um, music skills, there's so many uh, educators out there that can um, bring life to this whole virtual world that we're in um, yes. that are not on tonight. Uh, and we look at how do you collaborate your musical skills with each other in the school um, is one of the things I was thinking about because I know as Torian said, it's like Al and then I, um, and, and Garrett, I, I know Joe's on a different um, scale and so is Shelly, but Andre, like you just said, one of the things I notice is uh, with the Toronto Catholic District School Board, which I'm a part of, we don't have any, we only have one steel pan program, and I think that's yours and one other. And um, with the Toronto board, it's a little bit different. So funds are usually an issue. And as you were saying, uh, Joe, buying these apps for the students, it's it can be costly. And when your music programs don't have a lot of money, it definitely puts a damper on everything. The educational piece that we have and we relate to in the steel pan world is that when we bring in these instruments and we bring in a set, to run a program, it becomes an issue because money becomes the first thing. Now, I know it's hard to talk about that, and that's a whole different thing to talk about because then you're talking about tuners and you talk about instruments that you need for your programs. But with an app, it's totally different because we're now going into the virtual world. Um, how does that look um, moving forward in the near future? Because now we're talking about improvement and we're talking about collaborating your skills with each other. Uh, one school may have a, a music app and another school doesn't have one. How do we how do we um, sort of bridge that gap now? Al, you can uh, take it away on that one. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So this, Al, I gotta say, I just gotta say this one thing before Al starts. It's just that we're talking about the apps, but we're talking about twenty five dollars. So let's get real here. The instruments are more than the apps, right? Um, but 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 so, um, so I'll let I'll, yes, so. and and I agree to that. Um, but um, we can't we can't discredit the fact, which is um, we serve and especially with the steel pan programs, um, it's very common in the steel pan environment that we serve some of the um, the most needy communities in terms of education and in terms of mm -hmm. just um, just quality of life. So um, what might be trivial to you and I as um, adults in a different income bracket, mm -hmm. and, uh, um, it might be a little bit of a challenge to some of the communities that we serve. Um, in, in terms of um, Wendy's question, um, we, as itinerant music instructors anyway, uh, we have a little group um, that we um, try and bounce ideas um, off of. And um, I don't think there's, me personally, I'm speaking, I'm only going to speak for myself. Um, I haven't had the time because um, when I, sp I spoke to Earl a couple days before, um, just to kind of get my head around what questions we're going to be asked and what we can, what we're talking about. And I spoke to Earl, a good friend of mine. I said, listen, I I'm catching my tail right now. T 
teaching, you know? So, so much is put into, and, and, and a lot of the times when you think back in retrospect, you try too much to do things and kind of let things happen organically, but we, we're, we're trying here to deliver a program and we want to get it right. So I think that's where the anxiety comes from. And with all that, there really isn't any time that I, I wish I had more time to step away from that and collaborate with other, with, with my peers and say, you know, let's try and do something or, you know, um, there was an opportunity at PanFest. Um, it was, I think it was the 25th anniversary where we all got together and um, we played a song. We played together. And again, for the kids to see their instructors performing, I think that was the main goal of, of, of that. That was the main um, intention. And um, it was received very well. And um, I wish we can do it more. I just don't think we have the time. Um, I guess, I guess for I guess for our program, um, I know, um, and I know the um, the I guess the music department did for us, but this was for gen not just for Steel Pan, but for the whole uh, our whole department. Um, we also create a Google, well, I guess it, it, my people are familiar with what a Google Classroom is. It's basically a virtual classroom where, where teachers can um, put in a, a lesson plans and, and um, itinerary for your kids. So um, we actually created one as a group and we post in ideas of lessons to, to, the whole, to the whole department. So that was really helpful for me at the beginning of the year. Because when I when I was thinking about doing the online thing, I had no idea to start. Because basically, like Al said previously, we're our program is more performance based, and then all of a sudden we were changed from that to virtual, where we from a lot of us we couldn't use our instruments at all. So for a lot a lot of us we were just we're basically starting from scratch. So we were able so people were able to post stuff online. And we were like, for me, it was really helpful for me to get started. And I even, for me, I even posted some stuff also on that channel. And also the pan guys, we also created one too to help out. So for him, for me, I think I posted a, like, usually what we do when we start a program, usually have kids to choose instruments. So I actually posted me playing all the instruments so the, so the kids can actually see what, what the instruments look like and that that was great because i didn't have to do that with all the kids being in the room so i think um that's kind of kind of thing kind of the idea we can use for that um i'm I, i'm pretty much, <laughs> i'm pretty any on a weird spot but i can't really think of anything of right now of how the technology will be useful because i think we're still we're also learning how to use the technology at, at this point so we're st i think it's kind of hard for us to ask well i guess man for i guess for me to figure out where the type of will go from now from this point on so so for me and, and this is on a different level i guess it's like it it, it 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 sometimes has to do with your level and it, it's hard because we're dealing with students so I know when um when on, on, um Andre right when he did his um white when he did his um the first thing that came out with his song that he did in New York and he had a bunch of people playing you know what I mean and he was able to put them together and send out something remotely right and it's not just pan it's happening with choirs it's ha so it's it, it it it's 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 with everything right and it's in it's no different with pan so I think it's the problem that we're facing is that us as a community will like we would have to come together and do something together as a pan group and and knowledge right knowledge and and in musicianship with the pan is something that we don't don't forget like not everybody has that right so we have to be patient with everything with pan you know so and gareth just to jump off of what you said actually um the the challenge or really actually the opportunity is to kind of refine um, that approach 
with having musicians from around the world because I mean their skills are are, are clearly um, a lot better than the new students that you'll be you'll have. And so kind of refining that approach, keeping the students online, because I mean, let's be honest, the generations coming up right now have a huge online presence, whether they're using Instagram or I, I don't know at what age you can use Twitter. Um, they don't really, they're not really on Facebook, but Snapchat and TikTok. Um, one of the things that I did last year was I, you know, those QR codes that you can scan uh, with your phone, um, I had I did like a um, composer treasure hunt type of thing where I had the students pre-COVID <laughs> running around the school uh, in inside and out, and I posted different um, uh, QR codes that were linked to composers and and some of their um, just some history on them, and then they basically had to like fill out a, bin a, a bingo card within like 50, uh, 15 minute interval. And the team that, you know, obviously got as much information as they could uh, would would win um, the, the game. So it was, it was just another way to kind of use technology in the classroom um, uh, from, from an, online, uh, an online approach. And then those, those scores and everything, um, I was able to put into the Google Classroom because we've been using that at the board for uh, about a year and a half now. Uh, for them to like keep track with their their marks and and the competition that we had there, so it's um the the including the online portion beyond once we get back to in person. I think it's something that we as teachers need to implement for sure, just to interact with our students even more. I just wanted to ask Joe a question. Um, what Andre is saying, and I see a question popped up there, Earl, uh, the one before this about the from Wilma regarding uh, just creating um, a curriculum for steel pen. Uh, and I know most of you have been around for a while, but Joe, when you took over from Pat, I, I do recall that there was some sort of program that was already in place. And, um, and I'm gonna back up my little history a little bit here. You know, I come out of the, the realms of Earl Pierce Senior and uh, Pan Man Pat style. So um, was there ever a curriculum that was written when you came in to start teaching that program. Joe, jo, you're muted. Joe, you're on mute. Um, no, but Pat did share with me all of his arrangements um, and I transcribed them all into notation. But as far as um, uh, textbooks, books, curriculum, videos, uh, I acquired all of those things by going to pan festivals and panorama mm -hmm. and all those things. Yeah. There was nothing in writing at all. I don't even know if there is anything right now, but we do. F I mean, at our school, we do all the theory and the harmony and the seventh chords and triads and all of that stuff. But um, I don't think there's anything officially written at the board level. I remember, <laughs> I remember this Clara's day when Joe took over and he's like, Earl, I remember when I first got there and I heard a song called Pan in A minor. I was looking so forward to jumping into that piece. And then when I pulled the filing cabinet, I found the file. I pulled out the file and I saw all these pieces of paper and they had E, A, E, A. And he's like, what is this? And he just kept, I remember this conversation. Like, this is one of my first experiences meeting Mr. Cullen back in the day. And he had so much, he was so happy and so eager to jump into this music. And he wanted to learn so much. I even came down to Afropan one time and he's like, can I score this? And I was like, score what? He wanted to score our panorama piece. And I was like, Sure, if you want to go right ahead. He's like, okay, so I need each section to come down for about four or five hours. And I was like, are you mad? <laughs> go panoramas in the next couple of days. This is not happening anytime soon, Joe. I appreciate it, but no, this is not happening. So I know what he's saying, why he had to transcribe yeah. everything. And this is just the way we learn. This is how we learn. It's either we learn by ear or yeah. somebody else. How, what's the notes there? E, and they just write a letter E and an A. Yeah. And that's how they learn yeah. their music. Um, one one person that I remember, clear as day, Talib Reed Robinson. Big him up mm -hmm. wherever he is right now. Mm -hmm. One panorama, he flew in, let's say, the Friday, 
and he played the Panorama song that he never played, never heard, the Saturday. Mm-hmm. How? Liam Teague was arranging, gave him a score. He went with his music stand in front row, yeah. <laughs> and he played oh. the Panorama tune, and I was like, how did he do that? What? Right. And that's so, why I said earlier about the importance of what Andre yes. and Al oh. and what um, I say, yeah. And my dad taught me, like, even though because that's how we started, the importance of being able to read music. The pan is no different, mm-hmm. right? It's no different from the only difference with the pan. I have to say this is that it comes from a family. Yep. more than any other instrument so we have so yes big, yes so big, many right we have like the bass and so that's the issue but that doesn't mean that it's different like we could read music and we could you know and it's it's important that and and i even i'll i'll, I'll be honest i started off reading music and i gravitated away from that when i started mm-hmm. playing that. you know and and it's it's not it, but but don't they, and what what he said about Talib is is so right. When Talib went to university and even before that, he had a great knowledge of reading, and so did so did Andre, right? So don't that that uh, it's it's so important. Like <laughs> you, know, you, you could attest to this. What did I say was one of my greatest downfalls? Because one of your, the students asked me this music. question. What was yeah. my answer? You said uh, you wish you had learned to read. Uh, mm-hmm. It's never too late. I just want to add one quick thing. I I, really, <laughs> I, I think reading is super important because it empowers the kids. But there is a real gift to people who can learn by ear. And the pen community is filled with mm-hmm, mm-hmm. players. And the tradition comes by rote. And even when I spoke with Liam at Northern Illinois, a lot of players who go there, they can memorize entire pieces and by and, ear and do it that's a gift and yeah. mm-hmm. you have to be really pro you got to read you got to read you got to read but and Joe, and Joe, don't forget you know, the gift of, of learning by rote as well there's two different kinds of energies yeah. there yeah, yeah. You, know, this, you know you know what joe what you're saying there it's it's like you're so right about that but when i go back to what on what the the um thing i'm saying about andre and this is what kills me about andre andre plays arrangements and he could read music very well, but he also has that. He plays arrangements from years ago. I'm like, how the heck do you remember that? <laughs> you know I mean? Him and Al. Arrangement uh. senior from like when we were like 14 and 15 years old. But he also so it's so when you have the both, right? You know, yeah, it, 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 yeah. It, yes, you're right. I have most pan players have a great ear. That's what we're blessed with, right? That's but if it's, you. Yeah. Imagine, if you add the 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 ability to read music on top of that, which is what Liam and it's 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 amazing. So. I also think that there's a difference between instrumentalists and musicians, mm-hmm. and I I think that there are, um, especially in the pan community, like Joe like Joe just alluded to, being able to play by ear, um, being able to listen to something and you know flip it up, rub it down, you know. That is a musician to me, and this is, this might just be my opinion. Some people might hate me for saying it, but um, I think that's the difference between an instrumentalist who who kind of you can play any instrument, but you you may have to have those notes in front of you in order to mm-hmm. access right. But a mm-hmm. musician, I mean, you can just sing to them, and being able to sing that on the guitar or the flute, um, having that ear connection because music really is just sound. All we are as teachers t- teaching music, you're really just teaching people how to interpret sound and all its frequencies and what it sound and and the the complexities within that. Um, that that's I just wanted to add to that, Garrett. Shelly. And to have it and sorry. Oh, hold on, let's yeah. I see I think Shelly, Shelly raise your hand about six yeah, times. Shelly. Six times. I was just <laughs> gonna pop in and say, go ahead, Shelly. No, <laughs> Thank you. It's okay. Um, I just wanted to kind of raise. Maybe it's a very unpopular opinion, but I'm gonna I'm gonna just raise it anyway, and you don't have to agree with me. I completely understand the the rationale for encouraging students to read music, and and learning the theory and all of these things. I get it. I think it it it's a, a large part of that comes from just re earning the respect from like global musicians in the music community, having that skill sort of sets you on par with, with other musicians and other um, 
other, how do I say, like just traditional forms of, or the standard of, of what a good musician is, right? I get that. But at the same time, just to echo what some of you have already said, I'm coming at it from a different lens too, where it's like, those are all very kind of traditionally Eurocentric methods of teaching music and understanding music. And there's absolutely nothing wrong or less valid or, or, or less worthy of, of, of maintaining in learning through ear and learning through different styles of teaching. And as we know, like the steel band community is a perfect example of that. Looking back at the origins of the instrument and musicians that came out of Trinidad who, in, who invented steel, steel band music as we know it, they all came from a completely different, uh, different training of music and learning music. So I don't think it's necessarily a combination of one being better than the other. I think it's just a different way. And if we want to, um, for me as a teacher, I want to ensure that music is accessible to students, whether that be to learn it or to learn an instrument or to appreciate it. And sometimes when we place too much emphasis on the theory and on the, on the, on the notation, it can turn some kids off. That's like an obstacle. Why do I have to learn this when I can hear it and play it? Thank it's you. like you're yeah. delegitimizing the skills that somebody has just because it's different. So, so I think that if we want to be effective music teachers as well, if we want to draw kids to music and, and nurture and foster their musical inclinations and interests, we have to kind of widen the scope of of how we teach music and what we privilege as music teachers and not to kind of just keep this narrow, like it has to be done this way in order for it to be good, in order for it to be professional. You know, Caribbean musicians, we learn through, in different circumstances and we have different skills and that should be taught too, if that makes sense. It's like an oral tradition, A-U-R-U-L, Shelley. I totally, I totally uh, agree with that. Sometimes the page, what's written on the page almost can almost limit the expression of the musician. So I can I can understand exactly um, what you were talking about. And the only reason why I'm emphasizing the reading music is because I am better at playing by ear. And who Mark is making some comments here, and and I'm just gonna say this brief story here. Mark and a and a guy named um, uh, Mike Mike Rostin taught me a song one time, which was called One No Samba in a car by singing it, right? So I was, but, so I had the ear to do it, but I'm just saying both are good, right? Uh, it, it's not like, and I and I hear what everybody's saying about, okay, well. There's yeah. definitely room for both. Exactly, that's that's what it is. If you, if, and, and don't think because we're playing the pan that we can't go on the side of, because that's what it is. Yeah. The is one of the, because we're playing pan, they, 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 they just they just assume that we can't read music, right? And that's what I don't like. Like, I mean, because we all could play by ear. You know what I mean? Like, I'm looking at everybody, like, that's how we, like, that's what the pan is. We have good, it's, 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 it's like the other side of it. That's all I'm saying. Like, and then. Right. Sorry, Gareth. Just to add on what you're saying, but it's like, but even if they think that pan, if there's an assumption that panists don't read music, what's wrong with that? No, I'm not saying. You know, I'm just saying, like, you know, there's, I'm not saying that, that to you, but I'm saying the idea I'm of. Saying. I'm just saying that it's it's what we think is that okay, well, everybody's playing by ear, and you know, and and but not because because we've been educated since whatever time, right? Like like Liam and, and I just told you, like Al and Andre introduced me to a whole new world when I was very small. So I knew about, so it's not that, I'm just saying. We were small too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but. Notice that emphasis on very small? I guess well, we were just small. Yeah, yeah. We, we were all kids here. Let's just I get think that in their, in their defense, yeah, they weren't that much older than me. Right? Oh my goodness. Right. <laughs> very talented kids at that. But, but it's, but they were going at it from that aspect, and and we had the so I'm not saying that no, we're in that like foxhole. I'm just okay. Yeah. I'd like okay. To, um, uh, I'd like to make a point. Uh, 
I like to make a point to that um, where it relates to steel pan in the school system, because that's essentially what we're talking about. Um, I think when we're, we're the itinerant music program, I'll speak from that lens, where the itinerant music program is concerned, it's a performance based program. So there isn't a lot of emphasis on actually teaching to read because of the time constraints and all kinds of different vi uh, variables that we added to the equation. Um, the next step, because I learned in the in in a night in in a, I learned by rote first, and then when I formalized and I went to school, that was when um, when you started to take the actual course, the credit courses um, that I took at West Humber Collegiate. That was when I started to um, build on my knowledge of music theory. So I think I think again, I'll, I'll reiterate my point when I say that there's 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 room for both. But where the program is concerned that we're dealing with now, it's a performance base, so there isn't really much emphasis on it, sad to say, um, because of limited resources. But it really is, it starts that way. And then the natural progression is to go to a reading scenario where you're, where you're, um, you're rounding off your education. And, and um, I would love to see, and I encourage lightly uh, my students to, if it's something you want to do, go to university and study music. And I don't really hear too many kids that, that, that are in my program aspiring to want to go to university and study at the next level. That's where, that's, that's, that's where I feel empowered, that I need to have more people who are a product of the system where we learned in school like myself and then gone through the, through the channels and eventually go and you know, make it a career if you want. That's 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 so something that I try to model when I'm I'm, I'm teaching as well. So let me ask the next question because I know time is coming short, Earl, and um, you know this could go on all night because I know you guys got a wealth of knowledge, and I love the fact that um, and when we start we're talking, all players, Wendy, we're all pan players, so we know. About I, 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 I was just about to we say we can go all night. Please. <laughs> so technically. We can, we can, we, can stay in the <laughs> we, we were supposed to go for an hour and as you can see we're engaged and we have a lot of people still here so let's yes. say let's go until nine and we'll cut it is nine. that okay for everybody nine, nine and, is good all right yeah yeah we're going, so down the road. we're going down the road we're going down, down the road, the road. down right. the road ahead, but Wendy. um you know one of the things i admired and for me and and you guys touched on it so much was the fact that we all learned by ear and learning by ear for me was just amazing um, I think back of the days that, you know, you had to learn all the scales and Earl up here senior would be in the, in the, in portable. And he's telling us, you know, calling out notes like crazy. Um, some of us took to it and some of us didn't, uh, for, for those like Al said, who have moved on and, and used this as an opportunity to create a music career. I think it's amazing. We call Al, Al, you know, your name. <laughs> okay. My name is Al. Foster. Al Foster, but he has a, a you know an ear for music, also like Andre, all of them. And I take my hats off to them because they have actually developed that skill. Whereas uh, some of us will say, "Okay, call out the notes. We're just going to put it down on paper and let's go. We're good for that." Um, I admire even the Mark Moskas out there that is so talented in terms of a musical ear. Uh, Mark has been like that with me. Um, I'd be playing next to Mark, and Mark's calling out notes. Wendy, play so and so. Gosh. Play, play CDEF, you know, things like that. And it's fun because when you really look back, they are hearing what we're not hearing. And um, I take my hats off to all the music teachers. And, uh, you know, Earl, there's a saying in the panyard, when your head hard, you can't learn. So they have to call the notes for you. Be good for that. Can I um, just, um, Wendy, can I just say a 10 second thing? Yes, you can. Including the people that are on the chat for the people who have played. Yes. Band, I think we all need to pat ourselves on the back for learning the amount of music that we have in our heads. If you really think about from the time, even just musicians in general, right? Going beyond pen, I'm getting goosebumps just saying it. But if you think back to the first song you learned to now, how many, how many, how many of us could just be, go behind a pen and play for days? the amount of songs we know. What key is it in? All right, and you're good. That, that skill, that, that training of the brain, 
again, it's 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 an experience that is is not like any other, and it's. I I I, 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 think, I think if we sorry I think if we if th this oral tradition of 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 playing by ear. Um, I think if everything was kind of put on paper, you may have been a bit limited, stifled a bit. Having that, having that experience that you just spoke about, Wendy, of someone calling out notes and you're memorizing this, you know, for tomorrow, it's it's an amazing skill um, that's embedded in all of us, and we all need to take stock and praise ourselves for being capable, and thank the Almighty for being capable uh, to to do that. So I. Have to so, so I, in, in saying sorry. that, sorry, Torian, okay, just a second. Ahead. In saying that, I know a lot of you have done that as, as uh, musical arrangers, and there's so many arrangers even on this panel right now and out there. Um, I, I want to jump to the next question because I, I want you guys to give me a little bit, just a, a one name or drop a name. Who are your musical influences? Like uh, it could be just one person or two people. And um, what, what style did you take from them? Let's just tie that one in quickly. So I got to answer this question. And I know <laughs> that Torian, and we've talked about this before, and I, I, I don't know if I'm throwing him under the bus, but I have to, because Torian is one person that I know who did the same lessons. Um, before I entered the jazz program at York, the things that Mark showed me on the pan, it, 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 I can't, I, I, I don't know how to explain it. it, it, it and and it's and what's funny about it is that he allowed me to figure it out myself. So there are times that Mark said certain things to me, and I was like, "What is he saying?" And it was like years later that I actually realized what he was saying. You know what I mean? It was it took years for me to say, "Well, fine." Like, and I'm like, "Whoa, that's what he was," and 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 that's what we're. That's the same thing that we're talking about with this virtual, like what he was saying to me, was, Mark, but he never explained it and he let me figure it out on my own. And 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 that's what um, I think, I, the only person that I know that took private lessons besides me with him was Torian. And 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 the, it, 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 it's, I, 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 I don't know, because it's a pan thing, but people want to put it into a pan thing, but this is with me and Mark, it's a music thing. It it's, goes way beyond Pan. It's it's the things that he's taught. He was just like it, I don't know what to say. Like and so that's what what it is. And and uh, I don't know. Tori may be one to add on that, or anybody else. Want to add. Oh boy, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is that like I I don't know if you've done that with did done this with you, Garrett. But um, when we're at Silhouettes, he said he said play this. Oh. And you and you have to figure it out on the on the fly. <laughs> Had he done that with you? <laughs> like it's just from both angles. And it's so so would he be your musical influence? Then you're saying, okay. Well, so the only thing I could say before Mark and very quickly is that the thing that my dad did for me when I when mm -hmm. I was coming out of um what's it called when I was coming out of classical music is my dad introduced me to different time signatures. So he had a lot of parang music, which was in three yeah. four or six four. So my dad, but in terms of musical, not in the pre and understanding, Mark is like what he it, it, it he actually it, it, I I don't even know how to explain it what he did <laughs> it, to be honest like I don't know and yeah. and, and what I'm I'm not even lying years I and I was so scared to say well Mark what do you mean like I yeah. should have asked him yeah. in the class. But I didn't ask him. But then years later, I'm like, okay, that's what Mark meant, mm -hmm. you know. And 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 that's that's all I have to say about that. Torian, go ahead. <laughs> no boy. Oh well, I guess obviously my dad. I mean, it always comes. I mean, we all have our we all have our parents that we like. We've all learned from. We learn all learn from Steel Fan, you know, from all the greats, you know, in this city. So I mean, um. My dad, you know, Mark has been a big influence with me. Um, I guess regards, you know, like I listen to everybody, you know, even like I've had, I've actually had time under Alpha Al, because you know we were when you did your work in uh, Jesse. So like you know, you tend to learn from everybody, you know, 
even even non panis you know like um you know one of my favorite um uh, artists is a guy named um oh gosh uh Kenny Wheeler and he's a famous jazz trumpet from from Canada so you know you learn you you learn from where you want to listen to you know so I you know it's like I I can't you know you know besides you know my dad you know and um Mark and those you know it's like there's so many I can I can name I can't even think of them right now <laughs> it's all good it's all good all right and, how about you Shelly can you name Shelly? Shelly, I just wanted to say this one thing too with the um with the confidence with music. And I don't know if Earl remembers this, but one time I was playing with Earl's band in New York, and I don't know if he remembers this. I was a little kid, and I was left at the side of the stage, you know, in the confidence. And Earl brought me up, and he says, "Gareth, don't worry, I have a spot for you." So it's not just about the music; it's about confidence, of art, right? It's about giving you the confidence to think that you could play what you could play. And he put me right in the front line with Invaders. And I'll never forget that. It's, it, I've gotten so many things from so many different people. And I'm very appreciative of that. And I pass that on to my students. You know? Nice. That was 1996. I was with you, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Shelly. Okay. That's a tough question. <laughs> um, I think, you know, there's so many different, like, but Steel Band community is so multifaceted. There's so many different skill sets involved and everybody is so talented in so many different ways. Um, but to echo a lot of what you all have said, for me, teaching is like my thing now, I think with Pan. And for me, um, Pan Man Pat and my dad were very big influences in how I, how I teach and making the music accessible to my students and making it um, just fun and easy for them. So they definitely taught me how to teach this. And I think that's obviously the thing that I carry with me now in my involvement in Steel Bend. Um, music in general, I am an old soul. So I can't pinpoint and say like how, what I teach my kids comes from this artist or that artist, but it's like Torian saying, it's you just subconsciously absorb all these things and it comes out. But I do love old music. I'm a 60s and 70s. I love vintage music. I, my dad is a vintage music collector from Trinidad. So I grew up listening to a lot of very vintage music out of the country, all the different genres. I love 60s and 70s soul, Motown, Funk Brothers. I love 60s and 70s reggae and soca. I love 60s and 70s like classic rock. George Harrison and Bob Marley are like my biggest um, musical influences. But for me too, it's not just about the music, it's about the people behind the music. And I try to, I try to use them as examples too. So people with a message, people with character. Um, my biggest steel pen icon would be Jit Samaru. Uh, he was innovative. I loved his ingenuity. I loved his experimentation and fusion. Um, but I also really admire his character as a person, just so down to earth, so humble, never about ego. And I think that that, that inspires me too. And it, and it, it gives me like, you know, that sort of, he's like a role model that way. So for me, music, musical influences come from everywhere. And my kids always, even though they want to learn like new music that they're into, and I'm down with that, I ask them, what do you want to learn? And I do my best to, to arrange something for them so that it's relatable. But I always try to also bring in something old because I, I think it's more fun to play. There's more, there's more going on in the music then. And um, I want to pay tribute to the, to the vintage artists too. So nice. that's Thank a bit you. of my influence there. Mr. Rouse. I, I, over the years, over the past couple of years, I've really kind of embraced more of who I am. And I realized that I, I'm a sensitive person. You know, I can get influenced by the rain stopping at 6 p.m. So I decided to, I, to answer this question, I would have to go back to the beginning. You know, my, my parents, my mom was my first audience. And I, I would say the one, one of the things that I've taken, I, I've, I've taken from her is being eclectic. She exposed me to so many different kinds of music, different genres and styles. And so I realized when it comes to when I'm uh, arranging uh, for 
you know, for I, for snowflakes, let's say, I I tend to choose music that would make someone think, why would you put that on pen? It's 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 more of a challenge for me, if you will. Uh, so that would be the one thing that would, my mom would probably be my greatest influencer in terms of choice of music to to play. I'm not a soloist. I don't, you know, I just play in key and hope for the best <laughs> from Gareth. <laughs> but um, I'm more on like the production, the composing, the historical side of music. Uh, that's that's really what I enjoy mostly. Mr. Cullen, how about you? There we go. Um, I've been thinking about this through the whole show, and I realized that the very first time I saw anyone play Pan live up close was was the West Humber group under the direction of Pat McNeely at my wife's church when we were just dating. And I remember being blown away by the sound of that, never thinking I would ever end up at West Humber. But when I think of the influences, Pat sharing his arrangements and allowing me to notate them, I really wanted to be able to teach them, but I, I don't have the ear that you guys have to memorize pages and pages of stuff. So I just wanted to preserve the sound of the arrangement. That to me was the importance of the reading part. And, and Pat shared, so many ideas about class management in Rexdale, which I'd never seen before. Um, Al Foster coming to West Humber to do panache um, showed me the epitome of a patient teacher, how to be <laughs> calm and smooth with every kind of personality. And um, I, I think I have to give the big up to Pat McNeely because he really showed me that you can you can teach a class in in the hood and and make it fun and, and exciting and then earl you coming to west humber all the time is showing me how to work the crowd and get the kids excited and and along the way as shelly said we all learn from everybody everyone has a different style and we take bits and pieces from everybody uh seen seen liam teague work the niu orchestra and his arrangements as well the the voicings are incredible and seen mark mosca play Oh my God, autumn leaves and stuff. And just seeing what people can do on a pan, all of those things influence everything that I've, that I love about pan. Sweet. Yeah. And Mr. Alos Foster. Yes, sir. Um, I, uh, my musical influences, I, I get uh, far too many to, to, um, to, to choose. I can't pick just one. Um, I do have some favorites, and um, I think my favorites, and I'll go with Clive Bradley is a favorite, not only because of his approach to, to Penn, just because of his approach to music. Um, I am very fond of Mr. Bradley, God rest his soul. He's no longer with us. I'm particularly fond of him because he, being a musician that he is, never played the instrument, never played the steel pan and the things that he was just able to do. That was what inspired me. And, you know, obviously as a youngster and a, and a newbie in, in, in the, um, in that community growing through um, and learning through music, you, I tend to take away from my influences to kind of build my own, build my own identity. And I'm still doing that. I still say to, to students, you know, um, my students, my students look up to me and I tell them all the time that I'm a student just like you. And that's what's, that's what I think keeps me going is that I always have the belief that, and I hold on to the fact that I'm still a student. I'm still learning regardless of accomplishment, regardless of experience and regardless of where you go, I'm always learning. And, um, that's, that's pretty much what I take from from the um, the influences that um, that I've been blessed to uh, to be exposed to. Nice. So, Miss Wendy, we have four minutes, really and truly. People are asking, when is the part two? Somebody <laughs> even said that um, the Toronto Arts Council powered this one, so it looks like the people is going to have to power the part two. I really appreciate that, that everybody's sitting back and enjoying this. I really didn't think we'd be here for two hours, to be quite honest, but this, this has I know. been so amazing. Just sitting down and talking to you guys has been Excuse amazing. Me. Excuse mm. me, girl. I would like to I interrupt one, go ahead. just to say one thing. Um, mm -hmm. I think one, the biggest, and I will, I don't normally speak for others, but I think I, I, I'm pretty sure everybody would agree that if there's one thing that this pandemic 
has shown us is not only the power of music, but we always use the word essential. We throw things around, what's essential and what's not. Music is definitely essential. Exactly. Universal language and all universal, of us. Yes, and it is totally universal. I thank God for um, blessing us with this instrument in the 20th century. It's the personal experiences that we all bring to the table um, because we've all grown. We've all looked up to each other. I think in this pan community, I want to say in Toronto, not worried too much about outside, but we're talking mm -hmm. about Toronto right about now. You guys have a vast amount of knowledge and experience that you have brought to the table. And in the school setting, I always say there is a voice and a voice that should be heard. Um, with that voice being heard, um, you're sharing all of that and the students are learning from you. I've learned from Al, I've learned from Mark, I've learned from Earl Pierce Sr. I have learned from Andre just being around. Um, and there's certain things that you all bring to the pan community, whether it's just your presence. and um, like Earl Jr. being on, riding on my base every year, for many <laughs> years, that is an essential thing that has uh, stuck in my is. mind. And we talk about those things, but um, you know, when you're in a pan yard and somebody's calling out notes and you're, you're taking all that in, as Andre said, the amount of music that we have stored in our minds, when you think back and you look at your students that you're teaching, that is a piece of discipline that we instill in them, whether they learn to read music or not, and they're learning by ear, that is a discipline that you could stand behind your pen and take in as much music. It's just like going panorama, a 10 minute piece of music, it takes us months. But on the night of a presentation, it's 10 minutes. Someone asked me the other day, how do you guys absorb all that music within a month or within weeks? Andre goes to Trinidad and it's a two week thing for him, right? You would have been leaving when this week, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is no pan in Trinidad, no panorama this year, new generation of things. Um, so we've adapt. And um, I know, I just want to say like, you know, for those of you who are missing pan and we are all missing pan in Toronto, all the bands are shut down. We cannot go into the pan yards. We've all taken our instruments home and we are all trying to keep, ourselves and our minds occupied. And I think this is an opportunity to bring to the forefront the young educators, which is most of you, I'm not discounting myself. Um, who, line. who, Andre, <laughs> uh, you know, the pan fest, the assemblies, the music concerts are all gone. But what are we looking forward for the future? It's a virtual world, as you're saying, and it has made us more aware of what we can and cannot do. So let us take this opportunity to say thank you on behalf of Pan Arts Network for being a part of this panel. And I heard you all saying, hey, this should be a part two. We're looking at a part two and maybe a part three, who knows? There's so many other musicians out there um, we would love to bring to the forefront. So this is not about the music part. You know, on a Friday night, Earl would be doing what tonight, Earl? Um, tunes from Tunes Tunesville. From Tunesville. It's actually you know? next week, the first next Friday week. of every month. So that's Earl next week. But really think about it. Um, there's a voice that can be heard, and that's all of you. And I and I really appreciate it. And there's so many more of you out there. I like the Suzette Fidels, and we have Joy and uh, and uh, Leona. You know, the Pan Man Pats, we call his name. And he called this week saying, hey, I want to be on that. Mm, and right. that's, that's his journey. That's his journey, because we do have the pioneers who set mm -hmm. the groundwork in Toronto um, mm -hmm. for us to learn to take over. Um, I it. look at, at, at Afro Pan and Pan Fantasy and, and, and all the uh, silhouettes and all the bands that have been around for a very long time. And we learned under great musicians who taught us. So we pay homage to them tonight and we take our hats off because they gave us a privilege to experience the steel pan instrument in Toronto. True. Uh -huh. true, true, true. And speaking of which well, one, don't forget, in what two weeks i guess we yes, have this next one coming up right yep you want to tell them a little bit about that before we go yeah go ahead earl oh i said you but i guess <laughs> i <will. laughs> well i think i think we have an opportunity as i said there's so many musicians we would love to see this on a platform um, from an educational and a professional and the arts um platform in toronto 
So this one here, we're talking to people like uh, Dwight Belgrave, who came out of Trinidad, and I think he has been very instrumental also. Um, Nevin, who is coming from? He's Earl. Trinidadian background, I believe, but he's living in Barbados. He's from Panorama. Yeah, he really. was an amazing idea to have a Panorama on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. I loved it. And he's looking forward to doing a new uh, Panorama 2 coming up soon. I see he's pushing out some um, information Flyers. on that. Yep, he's pushing out and some then, And then we have Terrence. Uh, Terrence Wilson, who is the chairman of the Ontario Steel Band Association in Toronto. And uh, we're going to be talking to him also. And uh, then we also have Mr. Rudo Photo, Earl. Yes. I th you keep going. I'm clicking buttons oh. here. You can see everybody. <laughs> You're clicking buttons. Okay. Yeah, I thought yeah, you were yeah. talking too. No, no, no. So no, Rudo, no. Rudo is no stranger to us. And Rudo uh, has uh, been in Toronto since, uh, I, I believe, the age of 14, back and forth to Trinidad. And Rudo is going to be speaking on the panel also from also point of view of Trinidad being on the board of Pan Trinbago in Trinidad and uh, planning the events in Trinidad where Panorama or the junior Panorama takes place and bringing his perspective to the table. Uh, we also have Aita Sadu who will be hosting the event. Um, and then we also have two wonderful people who are part of Pan Arts Network. <laughs> and I think most of you know them. That's uh, Earl Lapeer Jr. and Wendy Jones. Uh, we will also be speaking on that panel. And the reason we're speaking on the panel is we're talking about how we have looked at events planning in Toronto and bringing the steel pan instrument to the forefront. Uh, because we always say pan belongs on the world stage and we're gonna take it there and make sure we take the rest of the players with us on the world stage. Yes, indeed. But let's thank the panel that we have here tonight. Let's thank all 62 people who are still here with us. We got up to about Where? 75 tonight, which nice. is amazing, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank nice. you so much. And this all came about in, what, about a week? So yep. imagine if we had a month to push this. How oh, We'd probably have thousands of people, right? <laughs> So I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you so much. Like I said, I thought it would be an hour, maybe an hour and a half tops. We went over two hours now. Um, yep. Thank you, everybody who's listening. I see all places all over the world. I see Cayman Islands is locked in. I saw somebody from New York. I saw so many yeah. people. I wish I could mention everybody that I saw, but we appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. As we said, look out for the next one, which is going to be more about promoting the steel panel form. Um, you're surely look out for my tune from Tunesville next week, Friday, 7.30. I have Michael the Panis from New York. That should be nice. But Al Foster, Mr. Joe Cullen, Torian Clark, uh, Shelly Karamat, Al Foster, <laughs> um, Andre Rouse, and Mr. Gareth Burgess. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys soon again. You know what I mean? Like, I know I would have seen you guys probably in March at PanFest, and pff, man... Just thinking that it's not there. Just thinking that I'm still here in Toronto in long sleeves in the, right now. It, I am in vexed. the cold. You know what I mean? I have I'm wearing a hoodie. I'm wearing a hoodie. So yeah. <laughs> All now I should be in the hot sun. Right, Andre? <laughs> Coming and, in visiting and, Andre in phase two. You know what I mean? Yes. Oh, With the apple of, day, don't forget the apple, apple day. day. Yes. <laughs> and speaking of phase two. Don't forget, check out their virtual concert, people. Please support the bands. Yes. Uh, their virtual concert has been moved from Wednesday to Sunday. It's, Sunday. it's going to be an amazing concert. I know so many of the, the artists that performed on that. I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be on Sunday. Mm -hmm. If you want more details on it, <laughs> hit me up. I'll send you the links. And you know, I think it's like 5 or $10 US um, to support the culture, man. Like, Do that. Joe, are you going outside or you have no heat in the basement? What's going I on with the I was about to say, Joe looks like he's ready. <laughs> Joe's ready to vamp <laughs> Uh, it's called winter. winter. Oh, you're talking about cold. All right, cool. I appreciate you. I need a scarf. I need gloves. I don't even have these things. I used to have a winter jacket, and normally I'm gone. I don't hit February month. I know that's the coldest month of the year, and I'm out of here. So now that I'm here, I'm looking for a, a, a goose. <laughs> Just wanted to say thank you to, 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 to you. I'll let everybody say their thanks and their big ups and we could get out of here. So go ahead, Andre. Go ahead. Yeah, I just thoughts. wanted to say thank you to Earl. Thank you to Wendy. Thank you for continuing this discussion. Wendy, you and I um, spoke earlier in the week and you know I'm just yeah. continuing that thankfulness. I'm also very happy to see Torian and Al and Gareth, who I've known, who I've known. <laughs> um, uh, Joe Cullen. 
Thank you for the relationship that you helped to foster back in 2013. And Shelly, um, it's the first time me meeting you, so bless you and all that you do. Bless you all. Gareth. Oh yeah, thank you guys so much. And um, what made this so um, easier to navigate through is that I know all of you. <laughs> <laughs> like I know everybody here and, and, and it's like, it's, and it was great conversation. So hopefully we can do this again and- Yes. Yes. Thank you guys so much. And thank you, Wendy and Earl and Pan Arts. Shelly, going up. Oh, wow. Um, thank you again. I, I know I've been out of the circle for a while in the Pan community, but I've been doing my thing. And it's just an honor for you to even think of me to include me tonight. So I just want to say thank you, Wendy and Earl. Um, and to Joe and Al and Torian and Andre and Garrett. Like, I know you all by name. And I know some of you more personally than others. So it was just really great to connect tonight. And I learned so much from listening to all of you as well. So thank you, all of you. And thanks to all my friends who are watching. I had someone from, all the way from Brazil, my friend Marcella. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. So thank you. And so uh, stay safe, everybody. Stay safe. Torian yes. Clark. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, I guess <laughs> I just want to re reiterate what everybody said, um, you know, it's kind of like we're all families, like um, we're kind of one yeah. step from another. You know, you know, I've worked with your father and, you know, I know you from this. So um, I think a, a really good idea, I, I don't want to suggest ideas, but maybe next, day, next time we could talk about the Pan Pioneers. Cause we talked about, we, we all talked about some of the people that we learned under from mm -hmm. our family. So I think uh, that's probably something I really want to look at for the next time. <laughs> nice. All right. Cool, cool. All right. True, true, true. And we are family, you know, Torian. Imagine yeah. Andre Rouse had to tell Torian that me and him are cousins. Back yeah. in the same, the same Hong Kong trip that we went to. I was like, are you serious, yep. Torian? You didn't know we're family? So yeah. that's another story. But thank you, Andre Rouse, for telling my cousin that he's my cousin. All right. Thank. Yeah. Joe Allen. <laughs> hey, it's, it's all been said. It's a real honor to be part of this. And thanks, Wendy and Earl, both of you. And um, thank you, all of you. I know you on different levels, and uh, you're all so inspiring in the pan community. And several of you, your fathers, were the ones who said, okay, this is how we do it. Check this out. Check out this book. Check out this album. Yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. Thanks to everybody out there. It's awesome. Amazing. Thank you, Joe. And Mr. Alos Foster, <laughs> Yeah, boy. <laughs> well, um, thank you, first of all, to um, everyone on the panel. Um, my peers, I'll call you. Um, always a blessing to be around people who do the same things and we share the same interest. So I want to say to each and every one of you, um, thank you so much. I want to thank uh, Wendy and Earl, again, doing great things with Pan Art Net, Pan Arts Network, um, especially in these challenging times when we're trying to just make things happen and bring some, some some sort of normalcy back in people's lives. I think this is a great thing. As you see by the the, the reaction that I'm seeing also in the comments, it was definitely well received and, and people want more. And I hope we take that and we continue to run with that. Um, also to the viewers, um, thank you so much. Um, you guys inspire us, you inspire me. And definitely thank you so much for even being here and just being a part. So thank you. Nothing but gratitude from me. Thank you so much, everybody. Wendy, in closing. I, I just have to say, may God bless you all and keep you safe in your schools that you're visiting. If you are on virtual, um, you know, experience what we are going through right now and these musical programs and this time. But remember that you are teaching the next generation and the next generation needs you. So be safe and sound and on behalf of pan arts network the toronto arts council uh i just want to say thank you thank you from the bottom of my heart um for being here with us tonight we love you all and keep safe and i want to say one other thing it is not how you behave only in your classroom it's how you live and how you love one another um <clears throat> that is the reflection that we see when we look in the mirror so when you teach remember what you're giving off that energy is what the children will remember. And for me, I always say, if Earl and I are doing something, we're going to tell you and we're going to be straight up about it. We care about you and we care about the programs that you are doing because you are part of the next generation. 
So we love you all. So keep safe, be blessed on behalf of Earl and I. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you, everybody. God bless. Good night. Bye. Bless Bye. up. Bye. All right, Wendy. See you Night later. Girl. Bye. See you later. Bye. Later. Yes.